Long range EVs now cost less than the average new car in the US. Hyundai Ioniq 6, which has 360 miles of range, pretty nice, that's a big range, and a price tag that's 25% below the national average of 47000 US lease deals are winning on price in the US. The Ioniq 5, with 303 miles of range, can be leased for $258 a month. They're still ahead of the U.S. companies, the big three. And their styling, they've really got some of those vehicles that they put out just really have the styling down. So, Hi, I'm David with EV World News. I'm here today with our founder and chief editor, Bill Moore. How's it going, Bill? Well, it's going well, and I will just give everyone a heads up here that my roof is being replaced right now. So I may occasionally, when it gets a little racket with hammering, then go to mute. But let's see how we do. Okay. All right. Anyways, so today we're going to cover an article from Bloomberg. I'm always hesitant to do Bloomberg because half the time it's behind a paywall and you can't get anywhere. Behind the paywall, yep. Yeah. The long-range EVs now cost less than the average new car in the U.S. Now, I don't think people understand. So when we say a long-range EV, we mean one that has at least 300 miles. 300, yeah. 300 miles makes long range. Yeah. We, that's the Remember, that's the bladder distance. Yes, there we go. Um, Tesla, Hyundai, Kia, and General Motors now offer EVs more than 300 miles of range for less than the cost of an average new vehicle sold in the U.S. Now, that average cost of a vehicle is 47000 and the most affordable is Hyundai Ioniq 6, which has 360 miles of range. Pretty nice. That's a big range. And a price tag that's 25% below the national average of 47000 So, the Hyundais, a lot of them don't qualify for the $7,500 tax credit, but they've been pricing them low enough that it doesn't matter. But now that they're going to start manufacturing in Georgia, that's going to start changing. That'll change it, yeah. Yeah, because they're going to be making 300,000 EVs a year starting next year in Georgia. But they've, they've actually started making cars there already. They are nearly as competitive as Tesla. I think they're still ahead of the U.S. companies the big three. And their styling, they've really got some of those vehicles that they put out just really have the styling down. So I see big things for them coming up. One of my friends recently switched from an Audi plug-in hybrid to a Kia EV6. And he was telling me, you know, some of the things he's had pretty good experience with the Kia, but his Audi being a plug-in hybrid, he had some interesting issues with, with it where occasionally he had to turn the car off and back on because the battery went dead because it used all the battery didn't automatically switch to the gas oh software yeah and he restarted the car and it turned on the gas and he said he's had some weird scary moments in the audi and so he decided he was going to get rid of that yeah yeah well you know that audi volkswagen group has had issues with their you know the software on their vehicles and they've had recalls and stopped production <laughs> things like that to try to resolve. So obviously that's a, that's a software issue. I'm not going to say I haven't had cars do similar work. A lot of things, you know, like with your Bluetooth and stuff like that in a car, sometimes you have to just turn the car off and back on to get some of that stuff to, to work. It's basically you're rebooting the computer. I have to do that with my television, right? There are times when it just gets, whoops, sorry, when it gets to the point where, look, the only thing you're going to do, unplug it, pull the power, and then let the computer reset itself. And then everything works fine. So if that happens with my 40-inch, whatever that thing is, uh, you know, flat screen upstairs, it's going to happen with a car. So. I know, but it, it's a little scarier when that stuff happens in a car. Oh, yeah, because you're, you know, you don't want that happen when you're, you know, 40 miles away from home or you're driving at 60 miles, 70 miles an hour down the road. So, yeah. No, I know. Stellantis is about to offer an electric Jeep of some sort for $25,000. That'll probably be a hot seller for them. Man, they really need to get off their butt and stop trying to sell their gas Jeeps for $75,000. Yeah, there's a big market out there still for me. There is, but uh, they, they're sitting on six months of inventory, you know, so that you know makes for a tough market. U.S. lease deals are winning on price in the U.S., the Ionic 5 with 303 miles of range can be leased for $258 a month. That's pretty damn affordable, especially when you figure you're going to be saving a few hundred bucks a month on gas. The Model Y can be as little as $399. You know what's kind of deceiving? When you go on the Tesla webpage, 
it tries to say this is what your estimated payment is after you factor in the tax credits and your gas savings. And I always think, yeah, that's just kind of that's kind of hokey. Well, yeah, it depends on how much you drive. Yeah, I mean, just just tell me how much the lease payment is. I bet though, with all that data they collect, that they have a pretty good idea what the average mileage is of the people that uh, own their cars because they know every. I'm guessing here. I'm assuming here, given all the information that is sent back to. I mean, the Elon wants to what wants to build a dedicated. I mean, what was it? Oh, he had what? Some huge number of chips sitting around, supposedly, that he couldn't use. And he said, no, don't put them in the car. Send them over here because we're going to build a great big centralized data system there in, I guess, near Austin or something like that. Um, well, you know they're collecting a lot of information, particularly because they want to get that for their autonomous driving. So. Yeah, I would say they probably know what the average mileage is that people drive their cars. Yeah, I'm sure they know a few things from all that data. You know, as a whole, EVs are selling for 15% more than a typical U.S. car. But, you know, one of the things is there's a whole lot of people who never buy new cars. I have very rarely ever bought a new car, okay? I, I've always bought used. So, you know, you've got some of that, too. You've got people that like to buy new and deal with the depreciation and stuff like that. And uh, that that's great. But uh, price is going to continue to be one of the top barriers for adoption. Unless you can buy that Nissan Leaf for 700 bucks, right? More people want to get in on that deal. Long-range EV boom. This is kind of an interesting graph. So unique models offering 300 miles of range. In 2016, 17, 18, 19, and 20, it was only Tesla. Tesla is the black here. Nobody else yeah. had that. Then Ford jumped in in 21. And Ford now has, that was one model. Now they have two models. Um, gray was Hyundai jumped in in 22. A bunch of companies jumped in in 22. Do we have anybody else jump in later? The yellow color. Yellow is General Motors. Rivian is this dark blue spot here. And this last one is Other. Other uh, is taken up a little space there. Who is Other? I wonder. Yeah. Other could be a number of companies. I mean, you got, you know, this doesn't show like Polestar or Lucid or some of the others. Oh, here's EV, more EV lease deals comparing to similar cars. We have that 243, but here's a Camry and gas is 346. <laughs> hundred bucks more. Yeah. Um, Tesla Model 3 versus a BMW 3 is uh, almost $200 less. And these are all um, 10,000 miles of driving annually with $3,000 down. So that's a pretty good little article, I thought. Hi, I'm David with EV World News. If you like this video, then please press the like button. If you like the content and would like to see more videos on electric vehicles, then please hit the subscribe button. If you have some feedback for us, please let us know in the comments. Have a great day.